Hi there, you're very welcome back to the evening show. Now it's summer, in case you haven't noticed. And when the sun shines, in between the showers, we do like to get out into our gardens and uh, to bring you some tips on how your garden could be looking a little bit rosier this year is our expert, Sinead Finn. Sinead, you're very welcome as Thanks, usual. Jimmy. Thanks, Jamie. And you back. brought some little friends with you, which we'll talk about I in did. a second. Yeah. Uh, now, I mean, summer is here, and as usual, we're going to get mixed weather. We're going to get sunshine and rain. Does that kind of suit what, what we're looking for in our gardens? It does, makes... actually. I know we don't like the rain. You know, we expect long yeah. summer days, lovely sun. But actually, a little bit of rain every now and again is good for the garden. And it promotes more growth, really. Yeah. And then we don't have to be going out doing a lot of watering, too. So it kind of benefits everyone. Yeah. Now, when you venture out into the garden at the beginning of summer, do you get rid of a lot of stock or old stuff that won't thrive from now on? It depends, really. It depends on the type of plants that you have. A lot will okay. go through the winter. Now, they might look great after the winter, dead leaves, but you can just cut them back and new growth will come up from the base and, you, you know, you'll get the flowers again this summer. Um, and then other plants, you know, with the past winter we had with the very low temperatures and a lot of snow, actually a lot of them were killed off. So okay, yeah. you would know at this time of year, really, or in, during May, they wouldn't have put on any shoots and no, no new growth at all. So you would have had to really take them out and replant with something else. Okay, well, let's find out what the something else is. You brought along three yeah. little suggestions for us. So these are uh, something that are, they're plants that are looking good now, Jimmy. Yeah. So um, the orange and red one there, um, that's a French marigold. Now, I should say that all of these are suited to a sunny position, so uh, they wouldn't like shade, they like, you know, full sun. That one, the orange and red one, um, is an annual, so it only grows for one year, so you won't have that next year. Um, they're good for pots and for hanging baskets. They flower right through the summer, nearly to September, so you, get, you do get a lot of colour from them, yeah. and they have a nice scent as well. Um, it's quite a strong scent, it's very attractive and the bees love it as well. So it's a nice one to have uh, for that bit of colour. Okay. Um, this one here with the kind of grey leaf and the pink, the two-tone flower, um, that's a carnation. So now that is what we call a perennial, so that will come back year after year. The flower big eventually will it? Well, no, it no. wouldn't really get that much higher, it would get wider. It will right. get kind of increasing with year on year. Yeah. Now, it will flower, you can see there's loads of buds on it, it has a lovely scent. So if you, if you have it, you can put it in a pot if you want, and it can go you know, near a window or a door, so you can kind of get the scent. Um, it's quite a good place for it. It won't look great in the winter. Um, the leaves will kind of go yellow and it's not particularly attractive, but no. that's the nature of the plant. And then sure. next spring it'll come on again. Okay. So it's a, it's a good investment because you'll have it for good. And then the taller one there is, uh, the common name is a pin cushion plant. And again, it's a perennial, so you'll have it every year. Um, it flowers for ages, so you'll have it flowering nearly, yeah. I'd say, into September. Um, the trick with it, though, is with the old flowers, once it's finished, you know, the stem is finished, cut off the old flowers and it'll promote more buds, more new growth on it. Um, and then, yeah, the bees love it as well. So it's a great, it's a great plant to have. Now, a lot of novices think that with the, the rain, and some of it is very heavy, that that's enough mm. water for the plants, but they really have to be watered very closely, don't they? Well, they do. Um, plants in the ground are usually okay. With rain, they have sufficient water from that, but... Plants in pots and particularly hanging baskets, people say, oh, it's raining, I won't need to water my pots or my baskets, but actually you do. Particularly with hanging baskets, they're on walls, so they're close to the house, so they'd be in kind of a rain shadow, they'd be sheltered from the rain. Yeah. So you'd really need, like with hanging baskets, you'd need to water them every day. Yeah to yeah. keep them healthy. But they are worth it. Hanging baskets are a beautiful adornment, they aren't are. they? They are. They're fantastic. Yeah. Um, they really give a great bit of colour. And again, they will go through until the end of September, early October. There's a few tricks to keeping them looking good for as long as possible. The watering is essential. I'd even say, you know, if we do have a few sunny days, um, you could water them twice a day, you know, once when you're going out in the morning and when you come back in the evening. And then feeding is really important too. Like these plants are like the marigolds. They, they're probably only going to last for the summer. Yeah. Um, so you could give them a liquid feed once a week and that'll keep them flowering and looking good. Right. Um, and then the third thing to do is to, as I was saying with the pincushion plant, to deadhead 
So when, once the flower has finished flowering, you know, just take it off, you know, cut it off or use your fingers, yeah. just take it off and it will keep the, the plant flowering for as long as possible. Well, I'll be watering like mad while before the metering comes I know, you better get started now. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about veggies. A lot of people getting into veggies. Is this a good yeah. time? Yeah, well, yeah. actually, um, a lot of people might say, oh, it's too late to sow from seed. But actually, there are some things that you can still be sowing now. Um, we could do um, carrots are actually good to sow now for like late autumn and even into winter. You can store them um, and you can grow them from seed now. Spinach is great to grow from seed, and the other one would be um, uh, scallions, I call them, or salad onions, I think is the trendy name for them now. Huh. So um, you want them kind of young and tender, that those onions, because to put into salads and stir fries. So all of those, and they're readily available, you know, in any garden centre, the seeds. It's a good, good uh, yeah. price for them, and you get loads of plants from them. Now, you have your own patch in St. Anne's I Park. Do. Really. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit about how that's going. Um, it's actually going really well. I'm addicted at this stage, so every weekend I'm really down there. So we started in February. Now, we went a, a, a quite a low labour approach, so we did all raised beds. I don't really like digging that much. Right. So with the raised beds, you, you get your topsoil in and you can plant straight away. So we have uh, potatoes, sweet corn, peas and beans, radishes. So we're getting um, a good few things. And uh, actually, they're growing quite well. So yeah. it's great satisfaction, you know. Well, loads of people are getting addicted to gardening these days. And mm. Bloom is going from success to success. Well, I think they had the biggest amount of people this yeah. year. I think it was up to 90,000. And of course, um, there's so much to see there. Like, you yeah. know, for the garden enthusiast and even, you know, if you're not into gardening, they have like crafts and food is a big presence too so it's there's something for everyone i think the weather as well really helped too yeah, it was a good yeah. weekend i think we should do this slot from chelsea as well sometimes oh we? yeah you know, i love that you came in for that one <laughs> <laughs> now what about little pests that we should look out for this time of the year well yes i have my most wanted pest is um, i know people are probably familiar with slugs and snails and green fly but my one um, is the vine weevil which is actually quite hard to see because uh, the adult beetle lays eggs in the, around the roots of the plant. So right. it's a little white grub with a brown head and they basically eat the root of the plant. Right. And you might not even know they're there and next to all your plant is just wilted and you say, oh, what is it? And you take it up, but there's no root and you can see the grubs. Well, briefly and finally, how do we get rid of the little blighter? You can get a, a liquid insecticide called vine weevil killer and you just dilute it in water, spray it on with your watering can. Happy days. Sinead, thank you very much indeed for coming in Thanks, as always. Jimmy. And thank you for watching. All of us here tomorrow with our guests. See you soon on The Evening Show.